A few months ago, Boom Supersonic got some bad news. Rolls-Royce, its primary engine partner, announced they were ending their partnership. The company will no longer provide engines for Boom's supersonic jet. And the press went bananas. Even though there are other viable engine options out there, the news played into a long-standing narrative that Boom is in over its head and is doomed to fail. But today, I'm here to tell you that the skeptics are wrong. Despite the very real challenges the company faces, Boom is actually extremely well positioned to succeed. It's just not in the way that you might think. Let me explain. Real quick, folks, YouTube is still telling me less than 20% of the people watching this video are actually subscribed to the channel. So make sure you hit that button and bell so we can build the absolute best community in aviation together. First, let's talk about Boom's mission. The company itself is fairly small, at just under 300 employees, but their aspirations are huge. They want to build the first supersonic jetliner since Concorde. As of the writing of this video, that hasn't happened yet. Its flagship jet, known as Overture, is slated for first flight in 2025. But skeptics proclaim that Overture will never get off the ground. For one, the act of building a supersonic jet is a monumental task. Now, I'm not an engineer, so I'm not going to speak to the technical hurdles that Boom faces. Instead, I recommend you watch Real Engineering's video on that very topic. But as hard as it is to build a supersonic jet, Boom critics don't often cite it as the reason the company will flop. Rather, they claim Overture will fail because its business case is weak. As a matter of fact, Rolls-Royce pulled out of their partnership not because of technical hurdles, but because they didn't see enough long-term demand. The argument against Overture typically goes something like this. We've already tried supersonic jets and they just don't make any money. Overture's predecessor, the famed Concorde, was notoriously expensive to operate. It used four times as much fuel as a 747 on transatlantic flights, and it was super costly to maintain. The only way it could turn a profit was if operators charged ultra-high fare prices, so Concorde mainly catered to business travel. The only problem with this is that Concorde was anything but luxurious. Take a look at these two pictures. Can you tell which one of these cabins is Concorde and which one is a regional jet? It's kind of hard to tell, isn't it? Concorde forced business travelers to make a choice. Either fly supersonic and arrive at your destination quicker, or fly subsonic and get there in style. And with business class rapidly evolving to include features like live flat seats and in-flight entertainment, many opted for the latter. With Overture, Boom hopes to eliminate that trade-off. They want to fly fast and also do so in luxury. While Overture and Concorde are nearly the same size, Overture will have about half the number of seats to help accommodate lie flat beds. But Concorde hardly made a profit with an already packed cabin, so reducing the number of seats further seems like a step in the wrong direction. Now, I'm not going to dispute the validity of that argument. When it comes to airline profitability, Boom certainly faces an uphill battle. But here's the thing, I actually don't think that airlines will be Boom's biggest customer. Instead, I think Overture will make a name for itself by becoming the world's most unique and successful private jet. You see, the private jet market is booming, no pun intended. A recent market outlook from Honeywell estimates that 3,200 large private jets will be ordered in the next decade and Boom has sneakily positioned itself to take a slice of that pie. For instance, a number of their senior engineers used to work for Gulfstream, one of the world's premier private jet makers. And most notably, its current CTO was Gulfstream's former VP of engineering. But why exactly is Overture so well suited to be a private jet? Well, to better understand why, let's take a look at the flying habits of one Elon Musk. In 2019, his private jets flew a total of 150,000 miles. Now, let's pretend that all of those miles were flown on a single plane, a Gulfstream G700. It's the current record holder for world's fastest private jet, and at a peak cruise speed of 710 miles an hour, it would take the plane 211 total hours to cover that distance. 
Now, let's swap that G700 for a Boom Overture. With an expected cruising speed of just over 1300 miles an hour, Overture could fly that same distance in just 115 hours. That's a savings of 96 hours, equal to four fewer days spent in the air. For these ultra-wealthy individuals, their time is almost more important than their money. It's in this setting that Overture's marquee feature, its supersonic speed, becomes a massive selling point. And while airlines need to worry about whether or not Overture can make money, these individuals don't. But if this is such a compelling selling point, why hasn't a single billionaire ordered one? Well, before I tell you why, I need to mention that while billionaires spend a ton of money on private jets, they spend even more money on fine art. Now, most people assume they do this to decorate their homes or just to flex on their peers, but that's actually not the case. They often buy art as a store of wealth. Fine art holds its value extremely well, and in many cases often appreciates in worth. For you and I, buying a Monet or a Picasso is prohibitively expensive, but Masterworks, today's sponsor, is changing that. They let you buy shares of fine art without needing millions of dollars, and with an impending economic recession on the horizon, it might be a good way to protect your wealth. Now, this is not financial advice, but if you'd like to learn more about fine art investing and also support my channel in the process, I'd encourage you to check out Masterworks. Over 500,000 people have already chosen to join, and Masterworks actually has a waitlist for new members. But by using my link in the description, you'll be able to skip the line and join today. Now, let's get back to Boom. Despite Overture's remarkable speed, it has other performance characteristics that aren't very well suited for private jet use. For one, it's advertised to have a range of 4,250 nautical miles. That's pretty good. It's about the distance from New York to Athens, but compared to other similarly sized private jets, it's a fairly pedestrian number. As a point of comparison, the Boeing 737 BBJ has a range of 6,000 nautical miles. That's almost enough to get you from New York to Dubai, and represents a 30% increase in range. But we need to remember that Boom's range estimates are calculated with commercial service in mind. That takes into account things like the weight of a full cabin and a maximum cargo load. In a private jet capacity, Overture is likely to carry far fewer passengers, meaning it'll be lighter. It also won't need all of that cargo space, so some of it could be converted to hold additional fuel. With these adjustments, the plane's range should be more comparable to its peers. But even so, there's another performance concern that isn't so easily dismissed. Takeoff and landing distance. Overture's unique delta wing design is very similar to Concorde's, and it's optimized for supersonic cruise. But such a design doesn't perform very well at lower speeds. In Concorde's case, this resulted in takeoff and landing speeds that were way higher than any other commercial jet, and it chewed up a ton of runway as a result, needing almost 12,000 feet to take to the sky. Overture is likely to do the same. To see why this is a problem, let's pretend that you're a billionaire. Congratulations! You have a beautiful vacation home in Jackson Hole, and when you travel there for ski season, you obviously want to fly private. Normally, you'd fly your jet into Jackson Airport, which sits mere miles from the slopes. But its runway is only 6,300 feet long, which can handle planes as large as a 757, but can't handle a supersonic jet like Overture. The closest jet to Jackson that has a runway of at least 10,000 feet is Salt Lake City International Airport, which is a full 200 miles away as the bird flies. Now, if you're flying into Jackson from, say, Chicago, it may still be worth taking Overture. Flying into Salt Lake City and then taking a helicopter the rest of the way could still be faster than flying direct on a subsonic jet. But let's instead pretend you're traveling from Denver. The added stopover in Utah would almost certainly make the journey slower. Hopefully, you now see the conundrum. When you have as much money as a billionaire, you don't have time to deal with these inconveniences, and you often pay to avoid them. But here's my counter to that. Most ultra-rich people own more than one private jet, and while Overture certainly can't fly every route, 
it'll still be a very valuable tool in these individuals' travel arsenal. I'd have to imagine that there will still be plenty of interest in this remarkably unique plane. So hopefully I've made a pretty good case on why Overture is so compelling as a private jet. But hold on a second, why isn't Boom making this argument itself? Why are they only positioning Overture as a commercial airliner? Well, here's the thing. Despite their engineering expertise and the $250 million that they've raised, Boom is still an unproven company. They first need to build reputational capital, and partnering with airlines does just that. They earn the backing of trusted and respected companies. Simply put, with the airline support, Boom builds credibility. So what's in it for the airlines? Well, Flying Overture helps bolster their image. Even if the jet isn't all that profitable, it'll garner a lot of positive press, much like Concorde did. Flying Supersonic brings a level of prestige that other airplanes simply cannot match. So at the end of the day, yes, Boom still faces big technical hurdles in bringing its jet to market. But should they succeed in doing so, they'll sell plenty of planes. Just not to the people you originally thought. So what do you guys think? Do you agree that Overture is going to be a success, or are the technical challenges simply too great? Let me know in the comments section down below. I got a feeling that a lot of people are going to disagree with me, and I am looking forward to debating. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you like what I do and want to help the channel to grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.